Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Rishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Let's discuss today's topic, GM Mustard. The Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee has given a nod to commercial break, to the commercial cultivation of GM Mustard. Now, it will be approved by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Then we can go ahead with it. So, that is what we are going to discuss today. The approval recommendations of the October 18 meeting, which resulted in the approval for the cultivation, commercial cultivation of GM mustard. About GM mustard, what are the farmer organizations' reaction to this recommendation? What is GEAC, Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, and what are GMOs, uh, Genetically Modified Organisms and Crops? GM crops in India and the regulatory framework in India and a question and last. This is going to be pretty factual. Wherever it is important for me to make you understand something, I will tell you that. But there is not a lot to, you can say, explain, but a lot to mug here. Let us move ahead. We will try to interconnect. But before that, for the 67th BPSC, we are starting with our mains crash course. And this will be provided on the online mode via the Drishti learning app. You can download this app from the Play Store. The date of commencement is 4th of November. That is, of course, 4th of November 2022. The price is reduced from 30,000 to 22,000. The mode, as I told you, via the Drishti Learning app, it will be online mode. Apart from that, the classes will be provided of 200 plus hours. And two classes will be provided per day. Six days a week, your classes will go on. Validity is up to one year. And if you have to watch any class any number of times you can do that unlimited viewership for more information you can contact on these two given numbers all right now let's move ahead with the approval the geac has approved the commercial cultivation of genetically modified mustard that means the mustard whose genes which has its genes modified for better yield and it was although previously cleared in 2017 but the Ministry of Environment was not happy with it, telling them to do more research on it. Then, what happened? That after a period of time, recently it again got the approval of GEAC, but it will again go to Environment Ministry for final approval. Moving ahead, let's talk about other things. The recommendations of the October 18 meeting, what were they? According to GEAC, environmental release of genetically engineered mustard, parental lines B, uh, BN, 3.6 carrying barnes and bar genes and MODBS 2.99 these are containing bar star and bar genes these will be released too. Environmental release of mustard hybrid DMH11 for feed production. The testing will be done according to the Indian Council of Agriculture Research guidelines and what will be studied that if they have any impact on honeybees pollinators and other pollinators post environment release. If their crack changes if their dietary habit changes that will also be seen but it will be limited to a period of four years renewable will be given every two years at a time based on the compliance report all right moving ahead if we talk about other things let's talk about gm mustard dmh11 means dhara mustard hybrid this has been developed by a team of scientists of the delhi university and the vice chancellor erstwhile vice chancellor of Delhi University was heading this team of scientists by the name of Deepak Pentan. Remember the name. Now, it the process uses a system of genes from soil bacterium that makes better suited to hybridization than current methods. If you have to produce hybrid mustard, then of course the current methods are there. But apart from that, we have uh, we have evolved the GM method so that they could get give us better yield. So. The yield increase of 25 to 30 percent over non hybrids have been registered. But certain NGOs have refuted this report. But still, as GEAC has approved it, we have a lot long uh, way to go because until and unless the Ministry of Environment approves it, nothing can be done. Reactions from leftist organization All India Kisan Sabha has welcomed the development, but saying that the process of producing GM mustard and other crops should remain with the public sector only and with the government only. And extensive testing of the hybrid seeds must be done by ICAR. But the RSS division, Bharti Kisan Sangh, has opposed this move, saying that this technology is killer. 
and carcinogenic as well. That means it can cause cancer to humans. It kills soils, microbes, pollinators, and almost all medicinal herbs and adversely affects crop diversity. These are the certain concerns you can write. Then GEAC, what is it? It comes under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change by the name of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. It assesses the proposals which are related to the release of genetically modified organisms and products into the environment and it includes its experimental field trials as well. So if it wants to ensure that the quality is perfect, it can also go ahead with the insurance of experiments through the fields. Under this, uh, and, uh, if we talk about GEAC, it is responsible for punishing the culprits as well under the Environment Protection Act. This is a very important fact you have to remember. All right. Moving ahead, let's talk about other things. What are genetically modified crops? But let's start with genetically modified organism. And any organism whose genes have been modified with a target in mind. If we have to modify anything, of course, we need efficient results for it. So, if we feel that we have to modify this organism by modifying its DNA or its genes, it results in a genetically modified organism. And it is to include certain desirable techniques. For example, it has been used in large-scale production of insulin, vaccines and more. If we talk about genetically modified crops, how it happens? Prehistoric human selection and modification of wild plants are done to make them cultivated plants. Modern breeding through scientific selection and cross-pollination among other related forms. Like scientific selection, uh, if you have to ensure that the progeny of this crop comes better, if I combine it to the from the same species, another sort of crop, then this is cross-pollination. Genetic modification for transferring useful genes from other organisms to crop plants. If you transfer genes of one particular crop to another, that can also result in such thing. Moving ahead, in the crops, it can be done by the manipulation of DNA which stores the genetic information of crops. To alter certain characteristics of the crop, such as it has been done in soya bean, maize, cotton, canola with herbicide tolerance, and insect resistance, virus resistance, drought resistance and food and tuber content. Now, such move will be very important for India because in the days to come, India might see a lot of flash floods or drought. So, we have to ensure that same uh, the crops, the quantity and quality of crops do not get compromised by the changing seasonal pattern. But it should remain under the four walls of the law as well. Moving ahead, let's talk about this particular method. The gene of interest is identified and isolated. First step is that when you want to modify any crop, the gene you will isolate it. it will, first of all, you will see what is the targeted gene that is the uh, targeted uh, crop and then you will isolate it. First is agrobacterial approach in which the gene is inserted into a vector. Vector may carry that gene to the crop. Then that is, uh, for example, if we take TI plasmid, then TI plasmid, it takes up the bacterium in culture, the bacterium which is raised in culture, and then the plant cultured with bacterium occurs. Then TI plasmid, it moves into the plant, plant cell and gene of interest in the plant beginning. Then cells are screened for the inserted transgene, ensuring that it has been finally done, and cells are transferred to plant growth medium. First is that. This is the longer approach. Let's go with the shorter one. This is the gene gun approach in which gene amplification is done. Gene, the qualities of it are amplified or exaggerated by coating the DNA with gold particles. And then gene gun, as it is said, it shoots the gold particles at the plant cell and the gene incorporates into the plant DNA. This is the shorter method. And then screening is done and transferring is done. All right, moving ahead. So the next one that is GM crops in India since 2000-2003, we are seeing BT cotton that is a pest resistant quality of cotton has been developed. This pest we are talking about is pink ballworm. BT modification or genetic modification has been done. BT gene is obtained from the soil bacterium by the name of Bacillus thurin 
genesis and it is introduced into the target crop that we have to ensure that it is anti pests then by 2014 uh, if we see this particular map since 2002 to 2003 the cultivation was only 1% but by 2013 14 it has risen to approximately 96% in brazil pakistan usa india and china you can see the cultivation of bt cotton in comparative basis china is ahead of india then for india is because of this only the fourth largest cultivator of gm crop by land availability or acreage and the second largest producer of cotton these are preliminary facts remember that moving ahead let's talk about the regulatory framework the acts and rules which govern genetically modified crops and uh, crops not organisms but organisms as well but let's talk about crops the environment protection act 1986 biological diversity act 2002 plant quarantine order of 2003 gm policy under foreign trade policy food safety and standards act of 2006 drugs and cosmetics rules 1988 there are certain ministries that are related to gm crops so such as first we have ministry of environment forest and climate change which is primarily responsible for conservation and protection of environment if any uh, environment is uh, actually getting disturbed by the introduction of gm crop it will be the responsibility of this ministry ensuring environmental and human health safety before the release of gmos and lmos that is why the final approval is in its hand it is the nodal agency for implementing rules 1989 and the cartagena protocol on bio safety then department of biotechnology under ministry of science and technology it is the nodal department for promoting biotechnology programs which also include gmos and provide scientific support in implementation of bio safety and of course ministry of agriculture here it monitors post release performance of gm crop these are certain other ministries that are related i am moving apart you can uh, click a picture i will also tell you from where i had sourced this the hindu the explained section okay so you can go and read there as well i have given you a gist all right moving ahead let's talk about the activities all activities related to research and development of gmos are regulated field and clinical trials of it and the deliberate or unintentional release of it if by accident it goes into the environment import export and manufacture of gmos are also regulated moving ahead let's to look at the question the genetic engineering appraisal committee functions under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare commerce and industry science and technology ministry of environment forest and climate change that's it thank you so much for watching mm -hmm.